Caitlyn Jenner broke Twitter yesterday, making her big debut in a spread in Vanity Fair. Of course, we used to know Caitlyn as Bruce. Now, everyone's been wondering, ever since this magazine came out, what exactly transgender is. Joining me in studio are Sibo Sizo and Ricky from Gender Dynamics. They're going to explain to us what transgender people do and who they are. Hello. Hi. 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 Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Now you both work at Gender Dynamics. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us what Gender Dynamics does? Gender Dynamics is an NGO based in Cape Town and we advocate for the rights of transgender, transsexual and gender non-conforming people in South Africa and beyond. I think we need to start the show off by defining what transgender is. Okay, essentially transgender or a transgender person, that's usually how I think it's more appropriate to say it. A transgender person is somebody who would have been born with a certain body that obviously has a sex that's assigned to it, which essentially the person is not necessarily comfortable with or does not believe that it actually reflects the true self that they see themselves in and they even identify as. So to put in simple, if maybe we were to use um, Caitlyn Jenner's um, example, that Caitlyn would be categorized essentially as a transgendered woman, which is that this person was born male-bodied, and we do know that mm -hmm. Caitlyn used to be Bruce. Um, they were born male-bodied, but they identify, they see themselves in that comfortable, more of the opposite that they, the biology on the outside actually dictated. Hence then the need or the, the want and wish to have to undergo this um, process to then affirm the self and look the part and actually portray this person on the outside so that then there is this correlation and match between the person on the out inside and the person that we as the world are seeing on the outside. It doesn't sound like an easy thing to go through in the society that we live in. Of course it's not easy. Um, we live in a society that polices gender in a very serious way where uh, men do this, women do that, girls do this, women do that. And it happens right from, from birth, you know, where people dictate uh, whether you should wear pink or you okay. should be bought this kind of toy, <laughs> you know. So I can imagine the stress that uh, Caitlin had to go through throughout her life, you know, uh, because I think to some extent transgender people do attempt to conform do attempt to be who we tell them to be, you know, but it reaches a point where a person like Caitlin makes a choice to say, from now onwards, I want to express and live life as it is truthful to me. And as a result, then uh, the person will start uh, the journey of transitioning from uh, the birth uh, sex to the sex that they identify with. To maybe add on that as well, as you bring maybe, like Spoo is saying, bringing it back to the, the very context we live in in Africa, where beyond just the gendering system of anything, there is also then the whole religious um, fundamentalist um, arguments that are brought in that human beings were created by this supreme being as they are, they must accept themselves as they are and they should be comfortable. There's also even the whole cultural dictate that then tells people that you're a man, you must wear pants, you will not wear anything that resembles a skirt or a dress. You're a woman, you were born female bodied, we expect you to not necessarily want to then express like the opposite, being a boy or being manly. And as such, all of this then translate back into even the way in which our laws and our policies on the ground that then accord different p people their rights and access to services, that you end up finding that most of these trans people in, who fall in between the cracks of what then the system says, men, woman, male, female, they find themselves lost somewhere in between there that they end up now not accessing even the basic services and rights that are accorded other people. Children who are transgender or who identify as trans in schools find themselves with the difficulty of how am I addressed in school? Do, how can I concentrate if I'm going to be addressed as a boy when I see myself as a girl or vice versa? And ultimately it results then in where trans people, particularly in this continent, find a struggle of either being um, school dropouts, ending up to being underemployed and uneducated and obviously then the whole lot of struggles then will result from that. Yes.